So good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Priyanka. And uh, it's such a great time that despite all the difficulties and the space that is around us and the distancing that we are maintaining, we are still able to virtually connect and meet so many all so many of you. And Priyanka is sitting in Chennai today. I'm <laughs> from MIT ID Pune, but uh, we are all here today. Such a fantastic time. Yes, uh, Priyanka, absolutely. Over to you. A few words. Yes, sure. Good afternoon to you, Arshia, and uh, the entire team of MIT ID working on camera, working behind camera, and all these lovely people who just joined in. You can see some about 60 people have joined in, so that's great to know. Um, yes, uh, I think in spite of the pandemic, MIT ID has really come up with this very innovative idea of, uh, you know, connecting and spreading education uh, as they always do uh, through virtual um, medium. So I'm sure everyone is as excited and I'm glad so many people have this opportunity to learn something new sitting in their own houses so, um, yes, really looking forward to this uh, whole thing, Arshia. Thank you All so right. much for having me. Thanks, Priyanka. So we have about 62 participants now, and I think it's uh, we are good to begin. Sure. Right? So uh, welcome all of you. This is a series of webinars and workshops that are being arranged by MIT Institute of Design for all the upcoming and budding aspirants in the field of design. So today is our first webinar in the in in slightly you can say in the domain of fashion, and uh, today morning we conducted a fabulous workshop which was around furniture design. I'm sure you must have seen it on our Instagram. It was uploaded there, and uh, you must have some of you may even have participated in it. Now, not without wasting much time, let me quickly introduce you to our star celebrity fashion stylist. So Priyanka Kochar, she has been uh, based out of Mumbai for last 15 years and she is a fashion stylist. She has been there, done it and continues to work with so much enthusiasm in the industry. She has styled the names in the fashion industry, in the Bollywood. She has worked for advertisements. She has done great editorials. She has done amazing photo shoots. Recently, she has published a book on the Indian weddings, which was a great step forward. She has styled Kajal Agrawal for several photo shoots. She has styled Tapsi Pannu for, in fact, a very big calendar shoot recently. And uh, well, the names of it, I don't want to keep seeming like I'm just trying to throw names at you. but. This is the kind of body of work that Priyanka brings on board with us in today's workshop. So very warm welcome to you, Priyanka. And Thank you. if you can just quickly tell us a few funny things that you must have faced during your fashion styling career that kind of made you think and say, OK, let me think about it, smile and move forward. Yes, yes. Uh, Arshia, fashion styling, first of all, I would just like to tell people, all of you who are pretty new to this entire profession, that fashion styling is a job which requires you to be 24-7 um, on your toes. You need to know about what clothes are being worn by other people. You need, to, you need to know what clothes are being designed by designers. You need to understand what bloggers are wearing. Uh, what cosmetic companies are doing, what furniture designers are doing, um, what jewelry designers are doing, everything and anything needs to be on your fingertips. So that is one uh, main aspect of being a fashion stylist. And uh, thinking about the funny uh, things that have happened, um, there, there have been experiences in every particular project that I uh, take up. But uh, yes, of course, I do remember that um, the funniest thing that has happened to me uh, has been that um, my couriers haven't reached on time when uh, celebrities are ready to roll uh, on the red carpet. And uh, maybe I'm sitting in Hyderabad and uh, asking for a courier from Bombay. It's supposed to reach in the morning at five, but doesn't reach. 
So what do we do? So um, there has there have been instances when I've actually given my own clothes to the celebrity that, okay, you can just go and wear this on the red carpet. So uh, without telling them that they are my clothes, obviously. Uh, but uh, yes, those have been those times, those really uh, tiring times where you really need to show presence of mind and um, understand that the show must go on uh, despite of whatever circumstances. That must be a real quick thinking on your behalf, Priyanka. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Okay, Priyanka, so uh, tell us about Style File and uh, if you are ready, I'm also ready to roll and we can start off quickly. So guys, what, what we are going to do today and the sequence of activities will be that we will start off with our workshop. And once we are halfway through, we'll take a 10 minute break where you don't go off, but we continue with a small presentation that I have to show you about MIT Institute of Design and um, more details that will be beneficial for you for your further upcoming days. So that's that. After that, we will continue to interact with you and we will continue our style file workshop. Once we are done, at the end of the workshop, you may uh, continue to explore, see the various options that you have tried, click a few pictures when you're going through it. You want to upload it on your social media, you are free to do that. If you want to tag MIT Institute of Design, fantastic. We will bring up those stories in our posts. Go ahead and do that. First of all, very important, have fun. Creativity comes with a lot of energy, enthusiasm and fun. So if you're doing that, you, you are in good hands. You are going well. After the end of the workshop, you will receive a Google form wherein we, I, I'm, uh, has it been sent? Okay, the Google form has already been sent to you. And what you can do is that select your best work and any two best works you can email, you can upload on through that Google form. And I think, yeah, the link is also put up for you. And uh, then the tough work that me and Priyanka will have to do is look through your beautiful, amazing, creative work and come up with three best uh, ideas. And we will put it up on our social media as well. Okay, so let's rock and roll. Priyanka, over to you. And let's start our style file workshop. Uh, guys, if anyone has any question during this, raise your hand and I will... You can either type it on your chat box or you can also uh, uh, ask to be shown and maybe then I can bring on your video when you have some things to display or new drapes that you must have tried. You want to show it to everyone. We will bring it to you on the, we will bring you on, on the camera as well. Okay, so Priyanka, if you are ready, I'm ready and I think everyone else is also ready. All right, yes, sure. Thank you so much, um, Arshia. Um, so just briefing everyone about uh, style file about this whole series of uh, this workshop that we're doing is that um, this whole uh, is this, this is going to be a journey for everyone to sort of understanding how you can drape a piece of fabric into 50, 100, 200 sort of ways. The, the kind of ways that you can drape a fabric onto your body are endless. Here, we will sort of see a few of them and understand what are the tools that are required, understand some tips and tricks, understand how maybe you can make it look beautiful. We will also see some pictures of already, um, ex uh, you know, draped examples uh, on celebrities, on designers, on men, on women, and just sort of understand that you actually see a lot of draping around you, especially in a country like India, where I'm sure most of your mothers would be wearing a sari at least once in a lifetime. So you have seen uh, the basic drape of a sari. So uh, taking ahead from there, there are lots and lots of examples um, of draping that you see everywhere. We'll just try to simplify it for you uh, and uh, sort of make sure that you understand uh, and sort of become sensitive with the tools and with the fabric that is around you. Uh, so, Arsha, shall we start with the process? Yes, 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 let's go ahead. All right. Okay. 
So first thing is, uh, I'm sure everyone knows what are the tools that are required at your end. Um, you require some fabric, some unstitched fabric. It could be a stole. It could be a sari. It could be a scarf. It could be uh, just a square piece of fabric. It could be a towel. It could be a blanket. It could be a gamcha. It could be anything that is unstitched that is lying in front of you. So every possible thing uh, can be draped according to your creative specialization. Uh, so before we get into the nitty gritties of draping, let me just introduce you to a basic uh, a, a basic styling kit that all of us should have with us before we begin um, draping. So let me just introduce you to some things that I already have with me over here. So um, this box that you see over here is one small tiny box that I usually carry with myself on most of my uh, outdoor trips because you really don't know what is required when. And this is a very helpful tool for you to uh, sort of hold your drape together to sort of uh, add value to beautify your drape. So let's see what's there in this tiny little box. I'm just gonna open and start showing you one by one. First thing first is a safety pin. Now this comes in various sizes, various colors. You have silver and gold, which is technically available in the market, but you can get red and orange and crystals and Swarovski and whatnot these days. So you can go, as bizarre as you want uh, by with this simple safety pin. Second, um, this is another version of safety pin, but this is generally called like a sari pin or a pallu pin, or you know, most of the women in India use it to sort of hold their drape together. So this also comes in various um, shapes and various uh, uh, sizes. And what is really good about this particular pin is that it comes with a plastic top so it sort of just adds a little bit value you don't have to worry about that ugly silver or that ugly metal piece sort of shown through the fabric so this is one another kind of pin that we have um then of course we have some rubber bands so um it could be the plastic rubber bands that you use maybe for tying your like usual bread packet at home or things like that or it could be rubber bands that you put in your hair so i uh, generally use these sort of rubber bands which we use to tie our hair and um, i prefer a rubber band which has this kind of a loop if you can see me so it sort of tightens itself on its own and it's got these you know really pretty danglers which really look and add that little value in case if you want to so we have um, this kind of a rubber band you can use plastic rubber bands etc etc whatever you have at your end um, then of course some needle and thread is required in case if you are not really able to hold things with your safety pin or with your rubber band and things like that then a needle and thread you can um, use those also then um, I just keep some buttons handy because in case if I just want to sort of quickly uh, tie some particular uh, thing or maybe, you know, just provide some weight to the knot, then I can just add buttons if I want to. And um, last but not the least is I have a inch tape with me. Uh, sometimes you really want to measure, you know, if you're doing a drape for your entire body, then you just want to measure how much fabric you have, how much fabric you don't need, if you want to cut some fabric, etc, etc. So um, an inch tape works really well. It's a 60 inch uh, inch tape. So these are the small things that I generally carry with me in my draping kit. Now, these are basic things. There are other things also that uh, we can have with us. And one of the very important things is uh, you can have some brooch kind of a thing with you. Two, three brooches or lapel pins or anything that you have. So I have some a few brooches also with me. So this is something which has a safety pin at the back, if you can see, and it's also got a clip on. So in case if I really want to, you know, sort of put this on my head, I can do that also. It's quite a versatile pin. So I prefer using that, but you can use any sort of brooch or any sort of pin that you have fancy decorative pin. 
uh, you can also use some belts that you want just to sort of, you know, tie at your waist or tie at your sh- um, maybe uh, under the bust and things like that with a nice buckle. So, yes, I have a couple of belts also along with me. And then you can also have some something like to wear in the neck so that you can really force the drape into your neck piece or whatever you have. It just provides a little bit of support to for the drape to hold uh, in its own place. Um, another interesting thing is you can even have like a ring, um, not like a like a finger ring, but a slightly bigger ring. Maybe you can sort of, um, you know, buy some rings from the hardware store or uh, maybe use your earring, like a hoop or something like that. Uh, it's really helpful when you just have to pass the fabric through and create some interesting drapes. So what I have here is a ring with some rosettes, some golden rosettes, if you see, uh, really just add some texture and just some value, some jeweled value to this whole thing. Um, apart from that, you need fabrics, of course, and um, and then we can just get started. So um, also when you're choosing the fabric, you can choose any sort of fabric. As I told you, you can even choose a bed sheet if you want to. Uh, any possible thing. But uh, one thing that you should understand and keep in mind is how uh, heavy or how light the fabric is. So the drapes will obviously differ. And when I when I say heavy or light, um, let me just show you one sample. So this kind of a fabric that you see, I'm sure you can see my face through it. You can see like a shadow. So this is a very light fabric, maybe like a georgette or a chiffon or a synthetic, which, you know, really... You can really crumple up and maybe hold it in your hands. It's that soft, that light. Um, yes, translucent. Someone is saying something exactly. So a really light, really soft fabric um, really works when you have to drape, say, sarongs or uh, outerwear for swimwear and things like that, or uh, even scarves, stoles, things like that. So this really soft fabric works wonders. I've just selected a very, very, um, you know, uh, abstract print that runs through it. So I really don't have to worry about the print is going up or down and things like that. So this is one, one example of a fabric that I've selected. Um, second example is this... Uh, also translucent, but a fabric with some sort of print. So if you can see, I have some owl prints that are running over this. Uh, now, this is not georgette or chiffon, but this is like a cotton blend. So you maybe it's like a cotton viscose or a cotton rayon blend, uh, ideal for summers and winters both. And um, I like the print that runs through. So if you really want to add that little quirk or that little quiche in your everyday dressing, um, you can maybe select like a quirky printed um, soft cotton blend uh, stole or a scarf or any sort of fabric that you have. That is second. And third is maybe you select like if you are really looking for some Indian uh, sort of drape or uh, like a sari or a half sari or these, uh, you know, really quirky sari drapes that are really in these days, you can select like pure silk is what I have with me right now. I have a pure silk uh, fabric. It's actually a dupatta and it's got some beautiful kalamkari print over it. So I've just selected this particular fabric with me. Um, it's a little heavy than uh, the first two that we saw, but uh, it looks very rich and uh, it sort of stays really sturdy. If you pin it, you drape it, it looks awesome. So you can select this. And um, last, you can select like a pure cotton fabric or you can go for a little heavier uh, uh, material, whatever, chambray and things like that, whatever is suitable to you. So um, that's the basic uh, preparation that all of us should be doing before we start uh, understanding the drape and how the draping process is. So, uh, Arshia, should we start draping? Should we? Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead. 
All right, great. So first thing I'm going to just uh, show you is that um, I'm going to show you some basic techniques because I believe draping is such a creative form of expression that all of us have our individual styles. There's nothing that is right or wrong when you're draping. Everything is right. But yes, the ability to carry off that particular drape in that particular situation is what makes or breaks it. So uh, don't feel scared. Don't feel... Um, ashamed of anything whatever comes to your mind or uh, however creative however wacky you can go with your drapes so much more the better so um i'm going to start with showing a few techniques now before we actually progress to uh, the final uh, draping so here i have this one piece of cotton fabric in beige which all of you can see and this is probably the length or the width of the fabric. So it's about seven inches in width and it's pretty long. Now, I sort of got an idea that, you know, I really want to um, make sure that I uh, bind this particular uh, piece of cotton together. And I uh, was just thinking about how when I was a kid, my mother used to really plait my hair when I used to go to school. So I thought, why not apply that same technique that we use to sort of plait our hair to this particular piece of fabric. And cotton as a fabric is very versatile. You can sort of, you know, crumple it, drape it, cut it the way you want to. So um, I'll just show you something that I already did. And then maybe we'll sort of understand how to do it further. So here, what we see is that towards the end of the stall, what I did is I've created a flat kind of a thing. What I've done is you cut the fabric into three equal parts, whatever length is desired. I like this particular length. This is about 10 inches for me. So I've done this cutting of these three um, stripes in this fabric and uh, all I've done is just go ahead, plait it together. So I'm just going to show you what I did. So here you go. And once more, and I've sort of secured it well, right? So this is a plait that is ready. Now what I do after this plait is ready is that now I have the liberty to use it wherever I want to. So here I've added a few, a little bit of texture in this really, really mundane cloth. So if you see how it's sort of uh, adding a little texture, this is the original fabric. And towards the edge, you have this beautiful pleating plait sort of thing done. Very, very simple. You can try different plaits if you're good at, you know, maybe doing hairstyles and things like that. So this is ready. And now what I do is that I take this particular fabric. Now it's up to me where I want to place it. So maybe I want to place it around my neck. Maybe I want to place it around my shoulder. So um, things like this, in case if I want to drape this together, let me just show you what happens. Okay, I think someone is saying they can't see me. Can you see us now? Julie, can you see? Can you see Priyanka's screen now? Okay, okay she's saying. No. Uh, is your internet steady? Do you have like a good uh, good streaming? I, uh, can everyone else see? Is anyone else having a problem in viewing the screen? I think someone has oh. raised the can see. Spriel and uh, Almas is saying, okay, Farida is saying can see. We are able to see no, yes, no, yes, no, but not the I cloth. Think the ones who cannot see are, may have a little slow internet. So guys, just check your internet streaming because from our end, it's quite, uh, the, the live session is quite going well. Okay, so maybe just a little bit, you need to check your screens, uh, your streaming of internet. All right. Great. So yes, um, so I was talking to you about this uh, particular 
um, flat kind of a thing, a choti kind of a thing that we made towards the end of the fabric. So we have both the ends now with this choti kind of a thing. And now it's completely up to us. We want to drape it, say, cross just to cover um, our torso, cover our bust, or we want to take it maybe one shoulder where I'll probably take this fabric behind and get the two um, plaits on my one shoulder just to add a little bit of uh, tech, uh, you know, a little bit of knotting kind of a thing. And uh, maybe I can even secure this whole thing with a particular brooch if I want to. Um, there can be a number of ways. Now, I'll just show you what I did was that um, after um, I, what I did was that I sort of wanted to attach this particular piece of fabric to an existing garment so that I can drape it the way I want to. So what I did is that I just sort of um, did some sort of buttoning on an existing piece of garment, if you can see the buttons. Yeah. So what I've done is that I've just attached this particular stole to this existing piece of garment already. Now I'll just wear and I'll show you how this eventually looks like. So, yes. Okay, so I've worn this. This is already attached to the back of my neckline. And now it's all up to me, whatever I want to do. I can drape it like a scarf. I can leave it as it is. I already have these chotis, which I've already done. Maybe I can, you know, just cover my torso with this. I can do a lot, lot many things with this. I can maybe roll up my sleeve over here, create some interesting texture or things like that. But this is one uh, technique where you really uh, can do a lot many things with your edges. This is one technique, but you can explore whatever you want to. So basic cotton fabric, there's a lot and lot of possibility. Uh, you can do so many uh, different um, techniques and so many different things. One thing that I've shown you is how to manage the edges, okay? Um, Shall we go next, Arshia? Yeah, uh, so I'm also trying it while you're doing it, Priyanka. I just sure. have this uh, little boring yellow piece of fabric. Okay. And, uh, what I've done is I have divided into three parts and I'm just trying to braid it now. And uh, while you go ahead with the next technique, I will try and do a little drape on this dress form over here. Okay, right. awesome, awesome. So I think everyone who's in the meeting can, um, you know, really see an entire dress form also, along with the techniques that I'm showing you. So Arshia will be able to show you this full uh, torso length uh, drape uh, and how it looks when it's uh, ending. All right, so next we will start with this really, really light chiffonish Georgette-ish uh, fabric that I have with me in very abstract prints. Um, now, this kind of a fabric is great when you have to drape around your neck because this is a scarf. But there are so many, so many ways where you can really drape a particular scarf. So here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use... a a ring that I showed you right at the start. So I have this rosette ring. I'm trying to sort of pass this entire fabric through this ring. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. So I'm sure everyone can see this. You already have this cute little ring that has made itself stable in this entire piece of fabric. And now, since you already have this ring, which is already there right um, in the center of the fabric, you can drape it the way you want to. You can maybe create a cool uh, top out of this. You have a V-neck neckline, which has already been created front and back, just tuck the shoulders and it's all done. Um, Yes, Arshia, that looks really lovely. So uh, you can style it with anything. Wear it with a black dress or a white shirt or just plain white t-shirt or 
a nice contrasting t-shirt imagine if you do it in a nice printed fabric and you're wearing it with a plain t-shirt it will look really glamorous and what a way to uplift your outfit so easy and so doable by yourself not just once that's one way of doing it next time you want to wear it do it some other way try and just move it around maybe just lower this and this becomes your another option for trying this idea again i'll repeat when you're using pins please ensure that you are careful and not poking yourself at random places so this is another way and looks quite neat looks very elegant you can wear it you can style it when you're doing it say on an indian style kurta or a nice tunic some embroidered tunic with a plain dupatta so many ways to do it uh priyanka is that good yes absolutely arshia it looks fabulous uh, i like both the styles that you've shown everyone the one with the choker and the cowl and the second which is more like a scarf dupatta mix so i think uh, it's so versatile it's so easy that i'm sure all of you who are seeing this a uh, workshop can do it right away with uh, with us um, at your own end uh right. so yes the next way yes so the second um so we've taken this particular ring right now if you don't have a ring you can just sort of insert a rubber band or maybe you can sort of just uh, you know tie another piece of fabric also or you can just use a safety pin to just you know uh, put this put the entire piece of fabric together so what i have done is i've used this golden um, rosette ring that i already had with me and i've uh, sort of passed this entire beautiful um chiffonish uh, fabric through this particular ring and now what you see is that i get this very very pretty butterfly um silhouette out of this so you have some uh, pleats and some really falling things now this particular style is so so versatile that you can sort of do n number of um things with just this particular ring or you know uh, passing this through uh, a rubber band or maybe just tying a singular piece of fabric in between so first thing is you can really sort of um you know wear this butterfly drape on yourself so it covers your entire body depending upon the length of the fabric that you already have second is you can you know really wear it like a bandeau top like a bikini so you can have like a off shoulder thing which sort of runs through really nice and really flowy even at the back you can sort of tie a small cute knot which will look really fabulous and the third thing that you can do with this um ring or any sort of insertion that you have is you can even create a beautiful one shoulder very very grecian kind of a drape which sort of runs through uh you know if you i don't know if you can actually see but you have this little um, golden rosette ring which is right on my shoulder it sort of fastens itself and i'm just going to sort of pin this entire thing um under my bust here so it just forms a pre one shoulder which is quite flowy quite beachy um this kind of a style i generally suggest uh you know if you're going for a nice casual beach party or a day party kind of thing so uh, especially this fabric that i've taken which is really light and really abstract in print and um, this little golden rosette ring that i've added to this so um it sort of creates that very beachy vibe and uh, it looks lovely when it's worn um the way you can uh, sort of style this is you wear it as it is if you're sort of wearing that butterfly thing uh, fully then maybe you can just steam it with a pair of jeans or some shorts or some culottes or you can just leave if you have like a lot of fabric with you you can just leave it and make it into this one beautiful dress just wear some uh, uh body shorts and body suit inside and let this um you know flowy drape just be there and i think you're all set and done for uh the beach party great idea priyanka i'm going to try what you yes. have said i'm going yes. to try it on this 
amazing lace fabric. Awesome. And small, actually, it's just a small bit that I have. It's just less than about half a meter. Mm -hmm. So when we want to style it, as Priyanka has suggested, as a bandeau, let's hmm. try that option. Okay. Yeah, that's so, that's great. Of course, you have to do it on yourself. I'm just for the ease of doing it. I'm doing it on the mannequin, and of course. you can do it on yourself uh, it's diy yes so i don't have a fancy ring at the moment but what i have is again a very handy rubber band and i'm sure all of you have that at home so i've taken approximately like well uh, since i do it very often i got the nice center to it and i have just added the rubber band over here uh oh uh, many a times at home you have these some and bits lying sometimes it's in your mom's sewing kit sometimes it's in your own homes i or as priyanka suggested some fancy brooch which you can put on later so i'm just taking it over here and of course if you're wearing a nice uh, strapless bra you can directly start with tucking it in the bra within yeah. itself over here and create some amazing beautiful pleats So since I'm going, I have the liberty of using a dress form. I'm going to quickly show it to you on the dress form itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking it on the center of the bust. Uh, I'll just answer what Farida has asked. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Arshia is doing the drape. Is Far Farida saying can we knot it in the center also? Farida, yes, you can knot it in the center, which is the next drape or style technique that I'm going to teach you, which is knotting. So uh, you can, but right now, what we're trying to understand is inserting a foreign object into a piece of fabric and sort of trying to uh, give it a structure or give it a shape. So here, what we're trying to understand is. passing through maybe a rubber band or a ring and things like that but knotting is definitely an option you can knot it also which is the next drape that i'm going to see uh, i'll teach you for sure so i'm priyanka i'm i'm just getting there just yes bear with me everyone it I'm looks awesome trying to get some beautiful folds and some beautiful you know the fabric itself is so good and I'm really not worried about how it's going to be at towards the end because I know it's going to be great for sure. Yes, of course. I love the choice of fabric, Arshia. This very Victorian uh, English lace that you've taken yeah, works well with lace. You can't go wrong with, like yeah, yeah, so absolutely. So classy, always. Absolutely. it just reminds me of you know maybe wearing like a pearl necklace or things like that and just sashing around in a nice party which i don't know will happen when but just thinking and dreaming is not bad right fingers crossed as i must fingers say crossed. yes absolutely all right So wow we have something here is it balanced priyanka is it balanced yes yes it looks fine to me arshia okay now if you're wearing a strapless bra you don't really have to worry about too much about whether it's fit, fitting well are you comfortable because you're relying on your undergarment for the support and you're relying on it to kind of essentially provide you the right fit this is more of ornamentation you're trying to ornament it and give it you know if you're tired of wearing the same strapless black bra all the time and you are on a beach party or you're having a pool party just go ahead grab a piece of fabric use a few rubber bands use few rings and you have completely new outfit with you yes. as priyanka suggested you can knot it up or again you can use your strap itself to kind of give you the right fit and that's it we have it here yeah absolutely i think someone is asking something if they can use a plain t-shirt as well uh, of course you can use any sort of fabric if you use t-shirt it's really cool because it's got so much stretch in it the fabric itself is 
uh, really stretchy. So uh, it really sort of fits uh, on your body very well, especially a top like this. So uh, uh, t-shirt fabric works really, really well. Arsha is also adding this little cool um, goldenish. Just thing. adding something to make it a bit more fancy. Yes. A little bit more vintage with that very antique gold lace. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, this it looks like a bow here. top. Yeah, it does. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And yeah. if you are lucky and you have a little bit more length of fabric, just leave it open because that will be like even more gorgeous with a backless. And then you have these fabric around. Looks beautiful. Yes, absolutely. The trail looks lovely, especially in these cute bow tops that uh, Arshia has just draped. So that's great. So second, first technique that we are just quickly do a revision so that everyone is with us and it's not that we are just talking to God knows whom. Um, first thing is we learned how to handle the edges and how to give a texture to the edges, how to give weight to the edges and use the edges of the fabric in a more ornamented way. Second is we've used the insertion of foreign objects. It could be a ring, it could be a rubber band, it could be a lace, it could be any possible thing that you have with you. So pass your fabric through that particular foreign object and, you know, uh, give it a butterfly-like silhouette and uh, you already have seen what Arshia has done. Now, third, what we're going to do is, third, I'm going to take up this particular fabric in quirky prints. You can take any fabric that you have. I'm just going to use this. Now, third, I'm going to show you the technique of knotting which is a really, really important when you're draping. Now, knotting is very basic. Like I'm sure everyone knows how to knot. So if I suppose have to divide the scarf into half and just sort of do a knot like this, if everyone can see. Can, I hope everyone can see. So this is like a basic loose knot that you do. You can uh, generally, you know, people wear it in their necks in winters. That is one. And second, how you can knot is you just take the center of the fabric, wrap it around your neck and whatever edge which is remaining with you, pass it through this particular um piece of fabric and I'm sure all of you I hope I'm not blocking the mic though but uh, yes I hope everyone can see there is this very very beautiful um, knot like structure which is sort of taken place in my neck so this is basically I'll just show you once again for everyone who um, someone is saying they couldn't see so you take the fabric they hold it to the center, pass it around your neck. Your center is there on one side and the loose ends are there on the second. And what you do is you pass this loose ends through the center hole that you have created and bring it to whatever direction you want to. So this is something which is very cool. I know most of the parts of India are getting chilly and colder right now. So this, you know, works really well. You can sort of add some, uh, maybe you can add some, yes, it looks like a turtle neck. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Almas Khan. Of course, it does look like a turtle neck. You can add some brooch. You can um maybe add some uh, pin or things like that. It just looks so beautiful. Uh, another thing that you can do with knotting is that maybe again, we'll try is we'll take the center of the fabric, tie a loose knot. As we all saw, we've tied a loose knot. We let the loose, loose knot pass through our face and then with this excess fabric that we have, let me just tilt the screen a little bit for you. The excess fabric that we already have over here can also become like a bandeau top or can become like a dress and things like that if you all can really see what I did. So I just created a knot, put it around my neck and let the true um, loose ends pass over my bust and uh, it just gives rise to one really cool, fun, 
uh, drapey outfit, which also serves as a halter neck. So we've learned two techniques over here with the help of knotting. One is where you can, uh, you know, really create a neckline out of knotting. And second is where you can create a halter neckline while uh, with knotting. So knotting is really fun. I think, or as someone has already said, the last drape that Arshia did was a bandu top. And you can also maybe uh, instead, you can also form a bow like thing in the center by knotting. You can create pretty bows. You can create, um, you know, really cool space bun kind of knots also if you want to. So knotting is something which is really, really easy, really, really fun. The only tip over here is that you have to really secure your knots well. Because here you're not having uh, a foreign object, say like a safety pin or say like a rubber band to hold that particular knot in place. So that's the reason why you need to make sure that whatever knots you're doing, if they are uh, you know, really forming a tight silhouette on your body, you make sure that the uh, knot is really, really tight enough. Yes? Okay, Priyanka. So I'm just trying out with uh, some Indian fabric. Yes. And trying to that's... get some, some of that nice uh, border across to see if I can get a lovely, you know, shape around the neck. Mm. And kind of have probably a double knot style. Maybe yes. if I would have had a little bit more length, it yeah. would have worked even better. But nevertheless, when you look at it, when you see it from the back, you get a great, like a nice stand uh, kind of shape. You get your get to show your borders very nicely. And maybe you can keep turning it. Sometimes you just want to leave it across on your shoulder. You know, mm. imagine if you if this would have been a longer length, you could have just kind of let it flow around your shoulders like a nice uh, Greek drape or if, uh, well, uh, just, just a small tip. When you're trying something with knotting, it's always good to have a fabric which is a little softer, yeah. a little um, has some kind of fluidity to it. Uh, like Indian mulls work very well, chiffons, georgettes, crepes, lovely prints. It works amazing with this technique. Okay, Priyanka? Should yes. We move to the next one? Absolutely, absolutely. The next one that I'm going to sort of show you is this beautiful Kalamkari Dupatta that I already have with me. Now, what we need to understand over here is that. Um, you know, you have this beautiful motif, if you can all see, which is running through my dupatta, which is going upwards. Now, when you have these kind of motifs, you really can't sort of, you know, crumble it because it will lose the essence. What is the point of having this pretty motif when you're really going to crumble it? You can't sort of pass a foreign object also in this because it will look so bad. It will lose the whole essence of it being a Kalamkari Dupatta. Um, you can't even maybe knot it because the fabric is also thicker. It's quite thick to sort of... Um, you know, uh, it'll become really bulky if you uh, start knotting this particular fabric because it's really, really thick in weight. So what I am going to do with this is that um, I'm going to create a beautiful, I'm going to show you two, three techniques how you can uh, do the draping with this. One is that you drape your um, stole or your dupatta on one shoulder and uh, on your towards your, you just sort of fasten it on one, uh, under maybe um, right here, under your armhole, you can sort of use a safety pin. So this kind of a drape requires you to use a safety pin, fasten it with a safety pin. So what happens is that you have this beautiful sleeve, which is created on one side and you fasten it completely throughout your length with multiple safety pins or multiple sorts of uh, fastenings, whatever is comfortable to you. So when you do that, you have like this beautiful one shoulder flowy um, garment that you can, uh, you know, really explore. And I'm also going to show you one more try, technique. Try that out, Priyanka. Yes, yes. Try that out, what you just yes. 
Sure, sure, Arshia. Yeah, I have something similar to hmm. what Priyanka has. Of course, uh, that's more. Uh, it's got much larger motifs. But what hmm. I have the is this nice bordered uh, kind of uh, borders on like a running border meterage. So I have about two meters, which is just apt for a nice short dress, or you know, even for like a tunic that you might want to wear. Yeah, absolutely. It it it's a fabulous drape for a Grecian tunic. Uh, it takes you from day to night. Um, really works wonders when you have to. Uh, you know, it's really summer, really hot, um, really uh, easy breezy, very easy to handle, very easy to wear, ease of comfort, movement, everything. And you really don't have to worry about this kind of a drape really falling off or things like that. Like in knots, in foreign objects, in edge finishing, you really have to sort of take care that the drape is um, there at that particular position. Here, you can really play around. It's much more sturdier, as you can already see what Arsha is doing, pinning up um, at the side. So you have like a side seam, which is fastened right under the armhole. And... Um, you have this beautiful one shoulder draped sleeve, which is already being uh, formed on its own. So, Priyanka, you know what I'm going to do? Yes. I have this safety pin. Okay, yes. Quite ordinary. And I have this one broken bead necklace. Okay. No problem. I'm just going to try and use those beads and try and create one gorgeous looking pin. Awesome. So I'm just putting it through. Awesome. And maybe it adds a little bit more glamour to our outfit. Yes, absolutely. Small tips and tricks. Yes. All right. So this is what I've done. I hope you can see it. It's I have just used one broken necklace for beads. Can you see it? No. They can't see it. Priyanka, can you see it? Uh, uh, no, not. Yeah, I think if you... Yes, that, yes, that's better. That's better because it's too bright. Okay. So it's just a safety pin with a few beads on it. And I'm just trying to use it like how Priyanka has suggested as a fixture or as a closure to this amazing dress. Can you see it? How it just fits in? Yes. And it's, it's your lovely. choice. You know, it's really up to you how much you want to pin, how much you want to keep open. It's the comfort of the wearer. So you may decide that you want to pin it till your uh, hip length. If you're wearing something below, if you're wearing a pair of uh, boy shorts or if you're wearing uh, maybe some denim shorts, a great way to have like a nice breathe, breezy one-shouldered top. Yes, absolutely. Do, do you want me to do something on this shoulder, Priya? You, you can, yeah. Maybe uh, one or two pleats or something like that just to sort of add that little texture. Yeah, looks so pretty. Yes. So you can really adjust the length of your sleeve like what Arshia has, like a huge fabric, a huge yardage yeah. that really runs through. So now I think this is like a like a full sleeve or like a three-fourth sleeve. Oh, great. Almas, I was just coming to that, maybe add a belt. So I really had a belt handy. But yes, um, Almas has already suggested us what we're supposed to do. You can add a beautiful belt with a buckle around the waist and really singe it and look really, really gorgeous. Okay, so I'm happy with what what's happening at the moment. Yeah. But I will take Almas's advice and get a nice band to this. And awesome. probably it will become like a nice dress yeah. with a free open hand sleeve and a lovely, maybe it's got a nice slit, like a thigh slit to it. Hmm. So I'm coming back. Absolutely. 
Now over here, if you suppose if you don't have a belt, then um, you can even use like a typical kamar band that you have. You can use a sash. You can use an obi belt. Um, you can use a piece of fabric. You can use a ribbon. Okay, yes, Almas, we have a lot of telepathy. I must tell you. Uh, yes, you can use anything and everything possible that is there around you. To the whole idea over here is if you are. wanting to create a silhouette where you're wanting to exaggerate the waistline that you have then the only way to exaggerate the waistline in these kind of grecian drapes is to singe it and to singe it you need a belt a ribbon a sash uh, um uh, a kamar band or whatever whatever is available with you so once you do that it provides this very beautiful figure now having said that i would also say that even if you wear this drape as it is it works very well so decide on what sort of body you have what is your figure um like and then maybe you can go in, go ahead and do whatever you want to so arsha's already adding some really beautiful singeing at the waist really nice contrast in color with like a peach against a teal it actually reminds me of like a mint and coral like a subdued mint and coral thing which looks so pretty i'll just raise this up a bit yeah. priyanka i think so, that's good yeah yeah you can get a nice view of what approximately the length looks like but i'm quite happy in fact is it uh, is it weekend tomorrow is it sunday okay. it is i think that's something i'll try tomorrow at home ah okay nice samiksha is saying something she's saying we can add pleats also over here uh yes of course you can add full pleats also pleats is something that you know you can experiment on your own you can add two pleats you can add three pleats uh you can add no pleats completely completely um onto yourself yeah wow that's like a cool a uh, puffed sleeve also i got so, one some really nice shape here like you know yeah. it almost looks like structural but actually yeah. it's very soft if you see you know the fabric is kind of holding itself so well mm. and the good thing is that because it's printed you really can't see any crease lines yes or absolutely that's crushing or mm. you know something not so good looking on the fabric so mm. a great tip use your all over prints use prints that are quite maybe a little bit dark rather than uh, lighter ones so that you can wear a dress like that in this if you're wearing maybe a denim shirt fantastic because you have like a beautiful slit on both the sides so you may very well wear it as a top or of course go ahead and wear it as a dress yes absolutely i love this drape i'm sure all of you can do it irrespective of you know your your thin your lean your fat your full your round your hourglass whatever body shape you have this is a drape for each and every one of you you can just wear it um in the day you can wear it in the night with a belt without a belt with rings with earrings with necklace with shoes barefoot whatever possible yes so this was a really good one thank you so much arshia that was such a cool drape that you showed all of us um Yes, Asha. Do you, uh, you think um, you want to sort of uh, show them? Should we show them some pictures of existing drapes before we go ahead with the workshop? I think that's a good idea, Priyanka. Let's go do that. And once mm. we show them some pictures, let me do a quick presentation about who we are, what we do, where we are, what courses do we have. and to what kind of uh, um, you know some direction to students who are participating today they may want to know more about us so once you are done with your pictures that you want to share and then i'll also take 2 minutes and share this awesome great so i'll just i'm just going to share some pictures um which are already there with me which i'm sure most of you must have seen these are just some examples of um Okay, let me just uh, see where I can share. Okay, Arshia, are you able to see my screen? Yes, it's just coming up. Maybe okay. in a few seconds. Okay. Ah, uh, all right. 
Uh, okay. Can everyone see? I hope everyone can see this screen. Um, so here we have a couple of styles to drape uh, a particular scarf or a particular uh, stole. So we have six different ways um, in case you really want to sort of go and explore. So this is a nice checkered um, uh, woolen stole, which I already have. And these are different types of techniques that we can do. One is just throw it around your shoulder. One is throw it around your neck. One is, uh, you know, really wear it like a neck swab kind of a thing singe it with a uh, with a belt as we saw um, you know right behind our shear you have the mannequin with a singed uh, waist um, the next the fifth one is where you really fold the fabric into a triangle piece uh, fold it across and last is just wear it like a typical shawl let's see next um this is another classic example of a Grecian drape. So it's almost the reverse of what we've done already. So you can also um, try that. Maybe over here, all you're supposed to pin or is on the shoulder. As Arshia was pinning on the side seam, here you can start pinning on the shoulder if you want to get this kind of a um, effect, which is cowls um, on the knee. Uh, then this is something that we have already discussed. We've seen this is knotting and also securing through like a pretty brooch. These silk scarves or these satin printed scarves work really, really well. They really, uh, you know, they don't create bulk on your neck. They um, are really smooth. They feel good. They provide you protection against cold and at the same time feel very ornamental also. Um, now, this is one uh, style wherein you have this printed fabric with you and, you know, you're going for this party where you really don't know it's a whole day party and, you know, you really have this opportunity to change your the way you look with the same piece of fabric. So here, first one is you have like a sarong style drape, which is uh, done with the help of knotting. So basically, it's wrapping the piece of fabric around your waist and, and tying and securing it with a nice tight knot. The second one, which I've already shown you, which is a knot, and then you pass it through your shoulder and uh, the excess fabric, you can sort of pass it um, on your uh, bust and you can cover it. The length can be depending upon the length of the fabric or the width of the fabric, sorry. The third one over here is something what uh, Arshia has also done, the bandu top, but this is more like a huge piece of fabric, which is sort of knotted in the center and a little bit of securing with safety pins uh, to sort of um, uh, secure the center front and the fabric is just left alone um, to sort of sway. The fourth drape that you see is very interesting because you have this shawl kind of a drape which you sort of put around your neck and you secure it under your bust on one side either left or right whatever is comfortable to you with the help of a knot so when you do this particular knotting thing you have this little frill kind of a thing as you see which happens um uh, below the waist which really adds this little cool texture to this um, whole drape and um Fifth one that you see is actually nothing but a butterfly uh, top that uh, we can do, which I showed you with the second fabric with the Georgette chiffon thing. So maybe you can add insert a foreign object, take it over, take it under. You can have two pieces of fabric in a particular ring, like how I did in one uh, single gold ring. You can have two different pieces of fabric passing through a single ring. So that can be like a top and a bottom. This is also a very, very cool idea. And the last is where you just take the ends of the fabric and secure it behind your neck or at your at your nape, right? So this is one really easy, breezy uh, technique. This technique is... Um, generally used when you're at the beach and you know you just had a dip and you just want to cover yourself uh, in a sarong and things like that so this technique really works wonders uh, this what I'm trying to show is very typical uh, styles uh, different styles of wearing saris so you know draping like a dhoti draping like a chotu sari taking it around the neck taking it around the neck twice once 
chotu pallu pallu in the front pallu at the back etc etc uh next i'm going to show you is as we were talking in case if you really want to fasten um your waist you can really use this piece of fabric and tie it into a nice neat uh bow secure it really nice and neatly and it's a very um maybe you can take references from japanese um fashion because japanese people have a lot of this obi belt kind of a thing to singe their waist so you can also take inspiration from japanese fashion uh this is another one wherein um you have this piece of fabric which is uh, sort of uh, you know twisted in the front so twisting is also one technique that you will learn which i'll give a little bit of idea once um, arshia is done with a presentation and you can create this beautiful outfit by just twisting or turning the same piece of fabric uh this is also sorry this is um various designers who are trying to add a little twist to the typical sari adding bells adding brooches pallu in the hand pallu on two hands off shoulders etc etc so a sari is something so versatile that you can do whatever you want to with it and this for all the men whoever are there attending the meeting and are feeling a little left out that nothing is working for you here you go guys um this is a, a more chilled out version of a cravat or a necktie uh this is maybe just a loose knot around your neck usually in silk or satin with a cool print over it uh works really well in the cold uh, climate under your sh- uh, suits under the trench coat under sweaters under blazers etc and now just Uh, it's not only about draping yourself you can even use this technique to create fancy hairstyles so you can do knotting you can do a lot of other things adding foreign objects really create those beautiful beautiful um hairstyles with uh, smaller pieces of fabric of course yes so um that's about it uh hair hair style one was really cool priyanka especially if you have some really small tiny bits of pieces yes Usually, you know in india we get most of our dresses stitched from your local tailors uh, and your designers around you many a times you will see that there are end bits of fabric which usually go to waste yes so, and they are just thrown out, thrown out and uh, you know it's of no use to uh, to the tailor also and even for you it's not of not use not much use so yes. if you if you save that piece of fabric and if you're going out somewhere and you have your partner with you it would be a lovely way to wear it around the in your jacket as priyanka has showed so you have like a nice twinning but not over the top also but a little glimpse of showing that uh, you both are together and you have come together in this party yeah absolutely yes so thank you so okay. much arshia we'll over to you um you, yes and did i introduce myself or i completely forgot i think mm-hmm. i did not tell who i am so guys uh, my name is arshia i am head of the department for fashion at mit institute of design and uh, 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 now i will take you through the small presentation that we have put together for all you design aspirants so as i as i was saying that you must be at this decisive stage in your um, uh, uh, career and education where you want to choose what should be the right path for you in the future days so a little glimpse about a little discussion on what design is and what are the careers in design <clears throat> so you are in today's presentation with MIT Institute of Design we are based out of pune and uh, we have as you can see on your screen more details available as uh, with with our sister universities which are spread uh, across india so what is design and that's a question that is asked very often many a times you get an answer for it very easily but i will take you through a small little write up that we have so in terms of where design starts so design starts with the unknown because many a times 
you are looking at a problem and you are trying to find a valid solution to it and hence you will use design to find a solution to it through various processes various tools that are part of design process uh design is also about creating alternatives because many a times you would have certain options uh it also gives you a viewpoint about choosing the right option in terms of being able to empathize being able to find the right solution to your problem design is not just about thinking but is also equivalent to doing so whatever you think you process you also apply these solutions to create uh, answers to questions that you have been that have been put forth in front of you uh, again design is not uh, just limited to certain aspects it's very multidisciplinary because it goes right from today as we are in fashion we are talking about fashion we are practicing few ideas in fashion it goes from being from fashion to graphics to communication to industrial design transportation so it's multidisciplinary in terms of getting ideas inspirations and solution solutions uh design also connects with people because at the end of the day everything that you're creating is for some user it is bound to be for some person who will eventually use it in some way or the other so it also addresses the emotions of the user so who can be a designer many a times we ask the question do we have the right qualifications are we geared up well enough to be a designer well don't overthink you know that's what all of us do we should not overthink but try and see are we able to empathize that means are you able to understand the roles that uh, are relevant to the problem that you are dealing with are you able to frame a problem statement are you able to find that if there is something going wrong are you able to identify where the problem lies do you have love for the culture arts crafts around you then yes design is a field where you can move ahead are you constantly thinking to be different you know may from apart from your mainstream careers that are already been there for many ages are you thinking of doing something different for yourself then of course there is an opportunity for you to explore a career in design are you able to think of science and art together are you trying to find that balance are you trying to find where your more in, uh, you know where your more interests lies then yes you can surely look at a career in design so of course this is an exciting time because everyone has an equal opportunity to try to think to create and to present it to the world so this is an exciting time for all you budding aspirants who want to enter the field of design uh you know our website is www.mitid.edu.in you can visit our handle on instagram and also on facebook for finding more information and uh, you can write to us get in touch so what what courses are offered at mit institute of design so we have bachelor's program and master's program in industrial design communication and fashion we also have management where uh, if you look at your screen all the uh, all the disciplines that are offered at mit id you will be able to look at them at a glance and try and see what are the options that are available to you as a learner in future so what is mit id it is a community it's a it's a culture it's a place where you can find yourself be who you are create opportunities for yourself so mit id is not just an institute it's a community of people we are 1200 plus design students we are four major verticals in industrial communication fashion and management as you have seen in the previous slide we have 12 bres programs 14 mdes programs phd programs and you know so many the list is endless if you go down read it 
you will see that we have a great team of faculties, both full-time faculties and visiting faculties. We have international collaborations, the details of which are available on our uh, website. You can go through it and understand more about it once you visit the website. We also have a hostel facility and state-of-the-art laboratories, um, um, workshops, and so like in fashion, you have stitching labs, uh, uh, you have your pattern making labs and draping labs. Uh, you have an amazing workshop where you can do your 3D printing, you can do all kinds of activities of prototyping and developments when you enter uh, in the design field. So that's about us. So these are some amazing things that our uh, learners do in their program. As you can see, an amazing transportation design outcome with a bike, uh, a clay model of a beautiful car that is being designed, some pictures from our fashion show that is an annual event at our institute for the fashion students. So the lovely Carol Gracious, she is uh, wearing uh, the dress of one of our students, some lovely products that are on display. A lot of beautiful work and amazing work that happens in our communication design studios and communication design uh, disciplines. Uh, a lot of work with our um, retail and exhibition design, some amazing work user experience so you will see and uh, notice that we have a lot of collaboration with our industry partners uh, again the list is in front of you you can have a look at it you can uh, understand where are the possibilities of you getting uh, placed as a student in future so this is it. This is the admissions have already begun for our 2021 intake. The last date to apply is 28th of February 2021. And the information about website, uh, email, and everything is in front of you on your screens. So yeah, that's it from me. And uh, we can quickly go back to our workshop. And Priyanka, we are good to go ahead. Yes, sure. Thank you so much, Arshia. I hope everyone has um, got a little much deserved break from this heavy duty draping workshop, if at all it was. And we are back. And um, so before we start uh, with another fresh style of draping, I just want to sort of do a little bit of recap for all of you is that one, we've learned is how to manage the edges. Second, we've learned is how to insert a foreign object into the particular drape. Third, we've learned is the art of knotting. And fourth, we've learned is how to um, sort of do Grecian drapes together, right? So these are the four styles that we've already learned so far. Arshia has also given beautiful demos on uh, actual dress forms. So uh, you can really see what is... Um, uh, how it actually looks like. And we've also had a little bit of discussion about, um, you know, how to singe waist, how to give form, how to uh, add value to any particular drape that you're doing. Now, the next style of draping that I'm uh, talking about is something that we already saw in the pictures that um, I had shown you was the art of twisting. So let me just take another piece of fabric and show you what I'm trying to say when I'm twisting. So it's not knotting, it's not um, inserting a foreign object into the fabric, but it's directly twisting. Now, what happens when we are twisting is that you have this particular piece of fabric and what you do is you keep twisting. So I hope everyone can see over here, what you can do is you can add another fabric to this and maybe keep twisting and turning the fabric the way you want to. So we have now four fabrics with us 
if everyone can see just by the fact that we have twisted these fabrics together. Now we can maybe make this as a top and make the second one as um, a, a skirt or a dress at the bottom. So this twist at the center is going to be of utmost importance. And um, it generally works very well when you have two different fabrics. So it just gives you that little um, charisma. But I'll just sort of show you this a little more clearly is that you have this one fabric, which has a loop. You have a second fabric, which you pass in that to create a loop, right? So here you have two loops that are created on its own. You really don't need to um, fix this with a pin, with a safety pin, with whatever. Now, this loop can be used wherever you want to. It can be used on your bust, on your waist, on your shoulder, on your um, sleeve, on your neckline, on your torso, on your waist, wherever. So this uh, loop can be used vertically as well as horizontally, depending upon whatever style you want to. But this is one very, very good technique, very secure technique of um, forming a loop by twisting and uh, really works very well. And uh, it's always good to have two contrasting colors. So it sort of you know, really adds that little chicness to this entire um, outfit that we create. And in the center of the loop, you can accentuate it with maybe um, a brooch or things like that. So if suppose um, I have this, then maybe I can, once my drape is ready and things like that, I can add some brooch, I can add some ring, I can add any sort of embellishment if I want to. Even if you don't have an embellishment, it's perfectly all right because it still works very well. Uh, Arsha is already on to it. She's already doing it to get beautifully. To formation. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I have one small bit of fabric and yes. one large one that I've already used in the, in the previous experiment. Mm -hmm. In so, the Grecian drape. Yeah. So let's try and see. I have a printed, uh, this time I have a print and a solid with me. So what I'm trying is, I've done the loop that uh, Priyanka just showed us. And I'm just trying to create a nice kind of skirt style with this. Yes. And again, uh, you may decide to use pins or you may decide, you know, sometimes you can just use rubber band to make it just hold so that you are happy with the fit. Once hmm. you're happy with the fit, then pin it across. You know, it can become like a nice detail also. Yes, absolutely. And the, the beauty of draping is that it's so personal, you will always find it as your own interpretation rather yes. than something coming, running, you know, like just something that everyone else ends up wearing. Yes, absolutely. While we're doing this drape, I have this one small story to share with everyone now, Alshia that um, I remember uh, while I was on a job, I was on a shoot, um, this is about seven, eight years back. And um, my uh, the garment that my tailor had stitched for the song sequence that we were shooting for this particular actress was so tiny that she couldn't fit in. Apparently the measurements were all wrong. So we just didn't know what to do. So what we did is exactly what you're seeing right now. We just took a dupatta. We sort of draped it in that Grecian drape, what Arshia had done before. We made a bandu. We made a Grecian drape. We made a skirt. We made everything hands-on. Everything was, um, you know, uh, fastened with the help of bells, with uh, safety pins, with thread and needle. 
but there was nothing that went on to the sewing machine. So that was something that we really had to sort of work it out and deliver because the shoot was about to start in about two, three hours. We didn't have clothes. So uh, draping is something that really came to rescue when um, there was nothing else to look forward to. So I have this ready, Priyanka. Yes, absolutely. You know, as fashion stylist, sometimes you are also playing a role of fashion designer. Yes, of course. Yeah? So uh, it's so multidisciplinary. You are kind of, you, there's always something which is kind of overlapping and uh, you are always, you know, you need to have that multifaceted approach. Absolutely, absolutely. So totally. This is what, uh, Priyanka, I managed to do. I oh, am yes. so happy with this. No, it is. It is. It is very cool. Uh, Arshia has given this one shoulder suspender strap kind of a thing going with this really pretty draped skirt that she's made out of twisting. And the beauty of this twisting is that this particular knot is there to stay. So you don't need to worry. Maybe when you're manually doing a knot, there is always a pressure that, oh my God, what if the knot just you know opens up? Or what happens if you know if I move too much? Or what if someone really pulls out one string just for fun? Then your whole garment can sort of just fall off if you're knotting it. But this kind of a um, locking with another fabric really ensures safety. It's stable. It's comfortable. And it also allows you to play around with as much as you want, as you've already seen what Arshia has done. <clears throat> All right. We'll go to one last style, Arshia, before uh, maybe interacting with um, the audience over here if they have any questions. So one last style, which is very, very simple, um, which I'm sure every one of you can do at your end, we don't require anything, is that fastening the fabric into a neck piece so say i'm wearing a neck piece already if everyone can see and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to fasten this particular fabric that i already have i'm just going to pass it through this necklace and here you go so i have a pre-top already ready if you all can see and uh, the neckline is formed by this necklace that I'm already wearing. So this is a very, very easy technique. You can pass the fabric through the necklace and then form butterfly tops. You can form all sorts of tops that you have at your end um, by just passing it through uh, any sort of jewelry that you're wearing. Some people um, even pass it through bangles. Like a lot of Indian drapes, if you see, they pass fabrics through bangles. Uh, just so that, you know, pallus through bangles so that you just keep it secure. So lots and lots of things that you can add. Um, you can even add some brooches over here. I have this very typical South Indian brooch with me. So you can, you know, even add a brooch over here on the center if you want to just works like a pendant. Uh, the best way over here is to use a very planar necklace and use a necklace that's strong enough to hold the weight of the fabric. Because if you have something which is as, um, you know, as delicate as this, this kind of a necklace, then maybe it will not be able to really sustain the weight of the fabric. So it's important to have a little sturdy neck piece. Metal neck piece works the best because it adds that little sheen on your neck. So, um, yes, you can do that. You have multiple brooches, some brooches for the men also. You can maybe use like a simple lapel pin and things like that to sort of give value to your scarves or stores or belts or anything that you're draping uh keep a lot of jewelry handy keep a lot of belts handy keep a lot of safety pins and the styling kit that we've discussed handy with you so um it'll just give you that little leverage the little ease of putting your drapes together yes arshia priyanka that was really gorgeous if you have like a nice like the beaded necklace that you're wearing and you have some nice soft printed chiffon fabric i think that idea is amazing yes absolutely so okay. i think we've discussed almost all basic styles of draping about six to seven so i'm sure everyone has a fair idea yes thank you so much priyanka and now i will leave it open to all your participants you can ask us your queries if you have any questions please go ahead 
you can type it out or uh, yeah you please type it out on the chat box and we will answer all your questions right now so tanya you were asking can we make multiple loops with two fabrics of course you can there are no rules that are applicable in this personal styling because it's about what you want to do and who you are and it also depends on what materials you have in hand if you have two same similar dupattas go ahead no no problem at all yes absolutely you can use like a like a kerchief and a dupatta you can use a stole and a scarf or stole and a sari you can really try different combinations of length and width of fabrics okay waiting for any more questions uh what do we what do we have to submit as our work so tanya after looking at the techniques that we have showed you we have showed you knotting twisting a uh, combining fabric using external objects so all these techniques what priyanka has showed you you can try and use whichever techniques you want to style it on yourself click some pictures and whichever two pictures you think are the best ones please upload it on the link that has been shared with you please ensure that you make uh, the pictures quite neat uh, in terms of light so that we are able to see what your uh, creative exploration is and it should be well lit picture and secondly please write your name clearly on it so that we know whom it belongs to and uh, we should be able to see your work may today and tomorrow and monday we should be able to uh, let everyone know whom we have selected as as our best entries okay, okay someone is asking so, me something oh uh, just a note that please upload your work by 7 pm today because after that the uh, uh, the sub, you will not be able to upload it on the web on the uh, drive please ensure you do it before 7 pm today also while you are doing it when you are trying different ways of doing it and uh you want to click some pictures while doing it and tag us on it go ahead and do that as well we'll be happy to share your creative ideas on our uh, social media pages can we use our own technique of draping avni of course you can surely priyanka you want to say something on that Yes, yes, absolutely. I told this right at the start of the uh, workshop that everyone draping is a very personal, sensitive subject. Everyone has their own approach, and there's nothing right or wrong in this. It's only about how well you carry it that's going to be important. Okay, Farida is asking, can we use embellished material? If you have any examples, uh, please share with us. Okay, you can use embellished materials. You can use embroidered fabrics. If you have some nice nowadays, you get some you know all over sequined fabrics. Those are lovely and so glamorous looking. I don't have uh, fabrics as such, but I will show you what embellished means. Yes, embellished is generally something which. Um... has some sort of a surface ornamentation that is done over and above the fabric base i think arshia will show you some so i have this uh, am i visible priyanka yes yes yeah okay uh, so i have this amazing looking beautiful hand embroidered with mirror work so this is embellished like this you can get fabrics which are all over embroidered also again i have one very small piece of embroidered net as you can see this is machine embroidered so it's it comes in so many different colors and options uh, it's just amazing the kind of fabrics that are available throughout india these days okay so farida i hope i we have answered that question uh next is How do you work with thicker fabrics without making it bunch in random places? Okay, with thicker fabrics, we will we will always advise you to go with the pleating technique method. 
because it's easier to pleat those and you will get some really beautiful looking structures in place. So go ahead and try that pleating technique that we did on the shoulder while we did one shouldered kaftan, one shouldered uh, breezy dress. So try the pleating technique. Simran, thank you so much. It was lovely to be uh, uh, doing this for all of you. And we are hoping that uh, this was useful for you. So thank you so much for your kind words. Simran is saying that this is a, it's the best workshop she has attended. Thank you, Simran. You're very kind. Avni, I think we have answered your question. Almas is asking Priyanka ma'am, how have you got qualified for this profession? Any suggestions? Priyanka, please answer this. Yes. Um, so first and foremost, I would just like to say that I am also, I also went to a design school uh, to get my uh, initial education. So that's very, very important that you you know, qualify or you enroll yourself into a design school. And uh, once you are in a design uh, school, it gives you a lot of um, uh, exposure to different fields. And uh, while I was on my job, I'm a fashion design graduate by uh, degree. But while I was already on my design uh, job and when we used to go and do a lot of shows for um, Lakme Fashion Week and Wills India Fashion Week and things like that. That's when I sort of got exposed to this whole avenue of fashion styling where I met some really, really um, interesting people like Aki Narula and Gautam Kalra and industry stalwarts of that time. And uh, that's, that's the first exposure that I had um, while uh, working on a design collection with a designer. And uh, from there on... Um, there's been no looking back. Styling as a profession has really given me the uh, choice to sort of delve into other professions uh, from styling to writing to, you know, conducting workshops like what you're attending already. So styling is something that I feel uh, is apt for you uh, when you're asking me suggestions to choose this job is it's apt for you if you are a 24 by 7 person. If you're really ready to give it your all, if you're really ready to be aware of what um, uh, Trump is doing in US, to what is happening uh, with the cyclone in Tamil Nadu, to what is happening with the fashion week in Delhi. If you're ready to be updated about each and everything around you, then styling or fashion communication, I would say, is the career choice for you. I hope I've answered that question, Almas. Yeah, so essentially, Almas, you're looking at uh, the domain of fashion communication. And at MIT Institute of Design, there is uh, a fashion communication specialization program available that uh, you can browse through our website and you will be able to get more details on it. Uh, Arshia, ma'am, can you share MIT and Priyanka, ma'am's Instagram handle? Yes, I can. MIT's Instagram handle is our institute's name. MIT Institute of Design and Priyanka's Instagram and handle is her name which is that is Priyanka.coacher. I think Priyanka underscore coacher. Underscore. I'm also not yeah. very sure about my Instagram yeah, handle but yes. I think all of us just randomly went into Instagram and now we realize that okay we need to remember our handles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but MIT Institute of Design, as I said, when you type it in the search box, box it should, yes, uh, probably. You should be able to uh, get all the information. Is it going to be top three or top two? Uh, see, we understand all of you are doing great work. Okay, and we really appreciate it. There is a participation certificate for all of you that you can make as part of your portfolio uh, when you work, sorry, when you sub when you go ahead in your future. This certificate will be useful to you. We are looking at top three entries that uh, eventually me and Priyanka will decide. Can you tag us on MIT Institute? You can tag us. Okay. That is from us. And yes, ma'am. Thank you, Farida. Nice interacting with you. Thank you so much. Shreya, thank you both the teachers for today's session. Thank you so much, Ria. It was really nice to be able to do this for you. Thank you so much for your lovely words. And 
Am I missing any question, Priyanka? Is there anything that I've missed? Uh, one second. There are too many things coming together. So I think someone asked me what suggestions to be updated. What sources would you suggest to be updated with these current affairs, Priyanka, ma'am? Uh, okay. So quickly, I would say the first thing that I say to almost everyone, all um, the new entrants to the design field is please read the newspaper. I know all of us are really busy reading news on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, which is great because that is what we are supposed to do. And that is the trend of today's time and age. But what you also need to understand is that reading the newspaper is the first hand knowledge that you will get, be it in terms of finance, be it in terms of fashion, textile, agriculture, food, uh, money, sports, music, film, literature, anything possible. So reading the newspaper is something that I would really advise to everyone because generally social media is really curated to your um, specific needs. Newspaper is something which will give you the basic idea of being updated with current affairs. So having a basic run through every day on the newspaper is something that I would advise everyone. Okay, we have one more question from Samiksha Bhatt. And Samiksha wants to know, do we have fashion communication for master students? At the moment, we have it only at undergraduate level, so uh, not at the master's level. But in master's level, we have fashion marketing and management, which is also very relevant to the communication bit of fashion because it's got to do with the promotion. It's got to do with the retail activities that happen in the business of fashion. So fashion marketing and management is the master's degree that we offer at MIT. You may check out all the details further on the website. And Almas, thank you. You have been very uh, interactive. Thank you for your kind words. Shrishti, thank you so much. It was nice to interact with you. Julie, thank you so much for uh, staying throughout the session. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am, is there a portfolio necessary for the admission process in MIT for the BDES program? Uh, no, you don't need a portfolio for a BDES program. But what you can have is a collection of showing as to why are you inclined towards design if you are, if you, if you write, uh, during your school, if you have been writing for your school or through for blogs, show us that you have been writing. If you have been sketching or drawing, show us what do you do to show your inclination towards design. So there is no hard and fast rule for BDES program to get your portfolio, but it is compulsory for master's program. All right, thank you so much guys. And uh, let me close this session today. You all have been very attentive. I hope you have uh, learn something and a little bit fun while doing this. And thank you so much, Priyanka. It was so lovely to have you with us today. And uh, thank you so much for sharing these amazing insights. And we hope that some way or the other, the students will be able to benefit from this workshop that we held today. Yes, so absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me, Arshia. It was really fun. And uh, I'm glad that uh, some of the students really participated and asked some really cool questions. So that was really fun. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Uh, have a nice weekend. And uh, all the information is with you. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. And take care. Stay, stay, stay safe. And uh, we hope to see you in our next series of sessions. The details will be shared. Uh, on our Insta and uh, Facebook handle and also on our website. Do visit and see whatever is of your interest and participate. All the best. Thank you and bye-bye. Uh, Have a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you so much, Arshia.